event today and uh, I hope you have a good time here while enjoying your uh, dinners and um, stuff. So um, uh, we were given the topic no commerce uh, which is uh, no doubt a hot uh, e-commerce uh, open source solution these days very popular and uh, it's been downloaded millions of times, implemented at least thousands of times. And um, we actually uh, thought that we can uh, divide it into uh, two lectures. And the first one will be uh, solely introductory. So today's uh, lecture is solely introductory. Um, there won't be a lot of you know technical stuff and the inside stuff. You just like you know uh, describe what is no commerce. Uh, what are the uh, main functionalities and the supports that it provides to us? Uh, where can we use it and uh, stuff like that? Okay, uh, let's uh, begin with uh, the most important uh, point and also uh, um, the most critical point, let me say, that it is an open source. An open source, uh, by that I mean you can just download the, the source code and that's it. It's a CMS, basically, go to the administration section, at products, at categories, get it online, and that's it, you have a brand new e-commerce free of cost application. But uh, hang on a second there. Now, the story doesn't end there. The problem is that, you know, uh, while it's free, <coughs> pardon, while it's free and it's an open source, there are a few uh, you know, things that you have to take care of. Like, uh, while you are using it, like let's say implementing it, you need at least a few themes. You know, because the, the normally, the normal themes that you get, or let's say the themes that you get for free with it, the default themes are not very good. You know, normally, um, when I said that downloaded like a million times or implemented um, some, something like that, you know, uh, it doesn't work out with the default themes. So you have to buy a theme which comes like around $250. Uh, let's say if you want the sole license, it would cost you around $500. And uh, in the same way, you can develop them. Actually, we have a demo on a development of team as well, uh, which will be coming later. Uh, apart from that, apart from the uh, themes, there are other things like, 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 let's say, if you need some edit functionality to it, some functionality which is uh, customized, you know, so if I want to customize it, so then you will need developers. And um, those developers would be actually uh, developing a plugin. We will have a demo on that as well. That will be in the next lecture. Uh, about the plugins, uh, you know, there are a few strict rules and guidelines, already in the application that you guys can use to develop a plugin. Uh, let's say also there are widgets, which is uh, in turn again some plugins, uh, some specific kind of plugins. And um, that is it. So uh, today um, uh, we will move on with the introductory uh, lesson and let's say the introductory part of it. And um, could you please take me to one of the Yeah, this one. Uh, you know, uh, here are a few uh, some of the very uh, mind blowing, uh, uh, mind blowing uh, details about the knock commerce. Uh, it says that you know. There are around uh, more than 15,000 live stores powered by no commerce all over the world. Now that's a huge number and uh, also um, is the first and the only open source shopping cart which has multi-store and multi-vendor support available out of the box. That is also very crucial and it says that it has been downloaded for millions of times. So um, also it supports uh, cloud hosting services. Uh, such as Windows Azure and etc. So uh, also, okay, here are a few, some of the other facts, but you know, um, I, I want to um, stick to this one, the open source shopping cart, which has multi-store and multi-vendor support available out of it. Could you please take me to the next slide where they talk about the multi-stores? No. Yeah, yes, yes, this one. The multi-store one. The multi-store feature enables you to run more than one store from a single no commerce installation and manage all admin operations from your single administration panel. Now this thing is very critical because I remember uh, a few years ago we were developing a store application uh, for someone, uh, an e-commerce online store application for someone and suddenly they came up, you know, they said that we need this store and then we need another store with a completely different infrastructure, architecture and let's say requirements. So what we did back then was that we uh, tried to create a few class libraries which were common in both of them and then tried to implement in two completely different stores with different postings and different uh, you know, maintenance schemes, uh, etc. 
So um, that was pretty tough, you know, that took a lot of time. Uh, today, if you are using no commerce, it has, you know, a default functionality. And, you know, you guys can use the same installation, the same implementation to, uh, to, to you know, to uh, open two stores at the same time. You know, it could go on like this, like for example, you can have two domains, like um, one is me, Khaled, and one is Omar, and you've got like www.ourstore.com slash Khaled. Now this domain goes to completely a different uh, store, and then slash Omar, uh, this domain goes to a completely uh, different store. So this is a very important facility. The multi-vendor and drop uh, shipping is also an, an, an awesome functionality. You can have multi-vendors at the same time, Okay, so and uh, there is one uh, very another crucial thing also that you know um, the no commerce itself runs with um, uh, SQL Server, uh, SQL Server 2005 and plus. But uh, you know, um, uh, on uh, I was reading an article. Uh, I'm in the middle of that one. I was working in it when I was in R&D. So uh, you know, yeah. Uh, so, okay, so they say that you know, if you know the database structure and you have the queries, you can also use some other DB, you know, if you want to, it can be, uh, it can be customized to that as well. And uh, it is uh, based on M M MVC, SP.NET MVC 4.5. Uh, I think up to uh, today, now, nowadays, its latest version is uh, an off commerce 3.6. 3.6, that's the latest. And until 3, uh, 2.0, it uh, used to be based on web forms. Web form, yes. yes. By then, it, uh, now nowadays, you know, if you ask them that uh, we want to build uh, or if they implemented using web forms, then what? Then they will, you know, straight away tell you, sorry, we do not have any further support for web forms. You know, the first uh, critical thing about that is because the application itself is, is an open source application, so uh, they wanted to use an uh, open source technology, which is indeed uh, MVC, is an open source technology, web forms basically is and so. Uh, and um, uh, apart from that, um, where else can we go? Okay, yeah. This is a comparison, not comparison. Yeah, latest comparison. Yeah, this is now the, the latest comparison showing, you know, uh, the very end results aren't very good. But you know, uh, where it started from and how did it used to rule the market? For a lot of years now, and uh, now I think WeCommerce is giving it a uh, WooCommerce, sorry, is giving it a tough time. But anyhow, on the average, from the beginning to the end, you know, on the average, the no commerce has done uh, a lot better uh, than that one. Okay, these are uh, some of the points that uh, why you would like to use no commerce as your e-commerce solution and uh, stuff. Plus, I'm not going to read them out. Uh, okay, yes, uh, this, the, uh, these are the points that I was talking about in the, in, in the start of the uh, presentation that, you know, it is themeable. You know, theme uh, basically comes in as a downloadable and uh, installable uh, feature to it, you know. Uh, normally, when you have CMS, you do everything from the um, administration area. The same happens here, and uh, you've got themes for them. You can install them, no development, uh, no, nothing is required. You just go to the admin area, go to the theme section, and uh, install anyone that you want. So uh, that's how it is. Okay, and these are some of the um, plugins. Uh, you know, plugins happen to be like if you, uh, for a uh, Right now, it has support for all the payment, all the famous payment uh, methods that are out there. But let's say if there is a method which it doesn't support, and you want, you know, um, get that facility, so then you can either create that plugin or buy this ultimate collection, which has lots of plugins and themes and stuff. That one is for ribbons. You've got lots of ribbons like menus and stuff. And uh, this one is for uh, reminders. Uh, it, uh, it sends emails and you know uh, pop-up messages to the client that you know uh, you were here. You look at a few of our products, didn't buy them. <coughs> so we are reminding you if you want to buy some of them. So okay, it's the uh, default theme is responsive, and I'll, uh, I think almost all the themes available right now are responsive. That's another good feature because. Lots of people like to do their e-commerce same things, like let's say buying and selling stuff on their cell phones, uh, and so um, it will run anywhere on any screen. Uh, okay, this is basically the page from where you guys, yeah, 
from where you guys can install. Okay, from here, the installation of the knob commerce starts. You see, um, if you download this one, the 3.61, uh, it doesn't include uh, the source code. It's basically, I think, uh, downloadable uh, package which will deploy and you can go to the admin area and uh, do your stuff. This was uh, this one, the 73 MB is basically uh, the source code if you want them. The source code, uh, basically you will uh, uh, talk about them in the next lecture because that would be a little more technical. But uh, right now the source code uh, version, this, um, it, it happens like this. Here is a node.web application, the one that runs. And then there are like lots of, yeah, here it is. Yeah, here it is knob.web, the application that runs, and then there is the knob.admin. The knob.admin has all the class libraries which basically uh, which basically controls the um, uh, all the admin stuff, like adding uh, products or adding categories or let's say uh, putting some specific customer on an emailing li a mailing list, stuff like that. There is web.from framework, then there are the test classes, and there is uh, there used to be uh, the plugins, yeah. Yes, there is a plugins folder back there. That is where all the plugins come from. There are like hundreds of plugins already in it and um, developers can develop all of them. Okay, for the installation part, when you download the source code and run it from the Visual Studio, straight away you are gonna get this page. You know, so uh, on this page there are a few very simple uh, settings, I believe, a user email, password, <laughs> confirm the password, uh, and also the SQL server um, from where, where your database is, you know, you just need to give it um, a connection string to an empty DB, and it will go on and run its uh, script and do its awesome thing and create the DB for you guys. And after that, um, I mean, uh, you guys will get a straightforward application. Now our theme is... Okay, uh, no commerce plugins. Okay, uh, this is not a necessary slide here, but this just defines, you know, gives you more of a uh, way how many methods of plugins are there. It's not necessarily that they will uh, like that they will bound to these categories. There can be a plugin uh, apart from these categories, but these are the main categories. Like, what is a payment method? For example, I am trying to write a plugin which would help the application to uh, accept payments through PayPal. So what do I do? By the way, it already supports PayPal by default. There are lots of methods of payment already uh, supported by. Uh, default, but let's say if I say that you know there is a payment method, Khalid Khan payment method, and that it doesn't support, and I want to give it support, so then I'll have to create yeah. a yeah. 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 When it's the first payment method was introduced. Okay, it is just a test case, I'm just trying to give an example. So, uh, what you would do is that you will create a new uh, plugin and write its code and that plugin will be of uh, its type of payment methods. And there are widgets. Widgets are also plugins, but they are uh, more uh, related to the UI rather than the uh, functionality of a plugin. There are shipping methods, external authentications, like let's say I want to use the uh, Google Plus authentication, Facebook authentication, something like that. There are text providers, discount calculators, there can be lots of discount calculators, there can be an E can be coming, or I said summers, and I want to give my client some sort of, you know, uh, uh, summer um, sales, where I would put 2% sale and everything, or something like that. So you can have discount on calculators, plugins, there are already, some of them are available, some of them can be created if you want to. Exchange rate, you know, uh, that is very uh, crucial, like which country are you buying from, and what is the price, and in which currency the price is listed, and stuff like that. So exchange rate plugins are available <coughs> already. So okay, so um, that's it for now, guys. So thank you very much for showing up. And uh, this was all the introductory stuff. And uh, in the next uh, um, the next lecture, we will try our best to take you guys a little deep down in it, and I'll show you some of the. Uh, some of the more technical stuff, the coding stuff, and how a plugin is created. Actually, um, 
the age of plugin it kind of took us around seven to ten working days. <laughs> we cannot explain it completely, but what we can do is that how it's done. What are the basic uh, rules that this application has already implemented for you to use before you uh, create a plugin for it? And also, we will uh, show you guys a little bit of basic of how to create a theme and then how to provide it so that other guys can download it and install it on their implementation of the knob um, commerce solution. So thank you very much for showing up. It won't take you uh, 10 days again if you try to create a new plugin now. Mm, absolutely not. It will not take you 10 days again. And plus, there is a very crucial thing. Uh, there is a very crucial thing that is uh, when I was just talking about the structure of the application. You know, uh, I'm also we were also I think Omar was also a new guy to MVC and the application is written in MVC. So to look at it and understand it and then all the uh, everything that we have to implement, yes, this structure and all the um, I mean the interfaces and the class hierarchies to understand them and build them. Yes, it does take ten days around something at the first go. Later on, it should because later on you should be more worried about the code that you write for the functionality, not about the structure and the everything and all the uh, scenarios that we have to follow. So on the next go, I guess my guess is if I can be wrong, it should take the same functionality should take around three to four days to implement something like that. And plus, it uses you know very uh, famous techniques like for grid, it uses Kendo UI. Kendo UI is also a very uh, hot technique these days for showing up you know grid form data. So most of developers already know that. And in the same way, you know uh, all the other things uh, that it does, it uses you know famous techniques so that a developer doesn't have. That's why you know they took it from web forms into the MVC because more and more developers are moving towards MVC and as I said because it itself is an open source they are preferring to you know implement it using uh, <coughs> an open source technology so uh, that's why so there isn't anything here you know that's new to a developer to, let's say a mid-level developer like me but uh, you have to you know go through it for once so once you go through it Any questions, any thoughts, questions. Any confusions? <coughs> Thank you. Okay. Okay, then uh, thank you guys for showing up. Uh, please take some time and show up again in the next lecture. And uh, we'll try our best to take you guys to more technical stuff, the more of your kind of stuff. Thank, thank you. you. Thank 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 you.